Hola everyone, welcome to the Gavin Syme Show, and this is Bad Spanish Class, episode uno. And you know what, I was thinking about this because people need to learn Spanish. We're All over the world, people have this idea of like, oh, like I don't need to learn Spanish, but actually being bilingual does a ton for you, it helps you travel, helps you go to Mexico, but it's not just Mexico that you can go to, it's... It's Spain, it's Brazil, it's basically all of Latin America. It's a huge quantity of people that speak Spanish. Now there's a lot of Spanish classes and there's apps and all this good stuff out there. The problem with these is they're super, super boring. No one wants to learn Spanish because learning a language kind of sucks. There's no way to get around that entirely. However, I'm here, I got a glass of water. I got a cactus leaf. With salt, of course, but it's it's raw, crudo. It's crudo, all right? Nopal, nopal, crudo. And they're good. They are <clears throat> very good. So I thought, you know, as we watch the total sham of human rights, we watch people's homes, their liberties being violated, their lands being invaded while politicians posture and make it about them. And I've realized over the past five years or so since leaving the US, the more you're able to communicate and understand other cultures and not be stuck behind your own wall, even if there's not literally a wall, what our countries using borders, language and culture and nationalism ultimately do is they make us hate other people that we don't understand. We don't understand their language. We don't understand their culture. And the number one way they can do that is by us not understanding the language. We're always seeing it through a news media or a politician's lens because we can't actually sit down and talk to people. Now, there's very few of us that can learn to communicate with everyone in the world, but we can do better, I think. And I think learning another language helps us humble ourselves a bit, a little bit. If you learn Spanish, you'll never again be the asshole that goes into the store uh, and here's someone at the back of the fast food joint speaking Spanish and is like, why aren't people speaking English in here? This is America. You'll never again be that asshole. Like I was taught to be when I was 18, 19 years old, taught to be a nationalist. You don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. So if you teach your kids when they're young, of course, it's easy. But the reason I thought we do this is because my channel has a lot of topical things to talk about. But I thought we'd do some Spanish classes. And if you guys like these, I'll do more. We'll do a series of Spanish class to talk about practical Spanish, but I'll lace it in with what I'm seeing on the streets with actually talking to real people, with activist situations that I've run into, or just talking to friends down here. And we'll start doing Spanish classes from the ground. Because even though there's some great channels and things for learning Spanish, and there's apps for learning Spanish, there's Duolingo if you want the free one, and it's kind of a pain sometimes, but it's pretty decent for free. There's there's better ones like Memrise that, are, that cost on an annual basis, and there's all these things. But you know what? I thought we'd do a bad Spanish class. And I say bad Spanish because I speak Spanish the best I can. I speak Spanish the way you're going to speak Spanish if you go to the Spanish district and buy tacos and you wanna to talk to them and be friends. Like you're gonna speak if you come to Mexico. I speak Spanish like a normal person, not like a grammar student. And this is the problem with the schools down here and I've helped uh, Mexicanos with school homework because they actually are required to take English class in school, but most of them don't learn English because English class in schools down here is so horribly bad, the English professors aren't even really using correct English. So I've literally helped Mexicanos with a Spanish test, excuse me, with an English test as a native English speaker and a fairly high vocabulary English speaker. And this test score got a zero. They said everything was wrong. And I said, you go to your professor and you tell me they don't know what they're talking about. And they're like, no. And I'm like, yes, this is actual English. Your test isn't, it's wrong. That is not English grammar and it's incorrect. And the way the questions were answered were correct for English. And, and this professor had the audacity, when I say professor, they call him a professora. 
That just means a school teacher. It doesn't mean a university professor. The professora said, Pues aquí en México es así. Meaning, in, this is how we do English here in this school in Mexico. And I'm like, BS you do. That's like me going to a Mexican town and they say, oh no, you don't say it like that. And I'm like, well, gringos, we gringos, we say it like that. When you're speaking someone else's native language, you don't tell them this is how we speak English here. They tell you whether you have it right or wrong. And so the first thing you have to do, the first thing you have to do is realize that you have to be humble. You have to not be afraid to be wrong and you just have to laugh it off. You have to not be intimidated when it's wrong. You're gonna look stupid and laugh it off. You don't have to come to Mexico to practice real street Spanish. You can go to a lot of areas, right? Back where I was in Washington, there was a lot of Hispanics, a lot of people that only spoke Spanish. And I always avoided those areas because I couldn't connect with those people. And I always kind of feel bad about that now. I should have learned to connect, to speak that language. How much, how much would that have saved me in frustration when I came here knowing nothing about Spanish three or four years ago? All right? So let's talk about real Spanish. Bad Spanish, that is probably a lot of the things I'm gonna teach you are not grammatically correct. And I'm not, I'm not teaching it this way to say my way is better. I'm teaching it this way to say I'm still learning Spanish, the correct conjugations. Conjugations are something we'll come to, maybe not in this episode, but conjugations where we say, hmm, Let me, let me come back to that. Let me come back to that. Let's, get, let's stick to basics today because I want to talk about how we actually speak Spanish here. All right? So, yes, here's the problem with learning Spanish from an app. And you should. The first thing you should do if you want to learn Spanish is start learning it from an app. The problem is you can learn the entire Spanish tree in Duolingo or some other app that's similar, right? You can go through all the words and get all the things right. And you will hit the streets and you have no idea what's being said. Because... The Spanish app isn't teaching you how real people speak. They're teaching you the correct grammatical form, right? And it's good to learn that. I'm not saying that we should ignore grammar. Obviously, as an English speaker, as a native English speaker, I try and use my grammar correctly. And there's a lot of things I don't know. I'm not even great with grammar in English. I'm a good speaker in English, but I'm not great with grammar or teaching English or anything like that. It was never my thing. Because here's the root of learning Spanish. And that, this is what I tell the Mexicanos learning English. You have to stop worrying about what these idiot professors tell you about advanced grammar concepts. I've literally seen high school level English classes for Mexican students down here that are teaching universal, university level grammar concepts. University level grammar concepts that are completely irrelevant to us everyday speakers in English, us native speakers. They're not even things that we've thought about because we just speak. That's not how you teach someone a language. You teach someone a language, and that's what I tell myself. You just have to talk. You just have to talk. The way I actually learned Spanish was not from the app. You pick up new words from the app, but there's two really important ways to learn Spanish. The number one is learn filler words. That is, learn words like he, she, it, that. Because what happens is you'll start learning words, but then when they throw in all the filler words, right? As I'm talking, I'm saying, right? You know, here's the thing. These are filler phrases and words. And even though I try to not use a lot of ums and hmms and things like that, because I've practiced speaking for years, a normal person is going to use a lot of needless filler words, but also a lot of important filler words like him, her, them, they. Those are the words that are the most boring to learn, but they'll throw you off the most because the difference between me, yo, and you, two, distinctly different words. However, if they're not set in your head, you won't remember them and it'll totally throw you off because you're you might understand words being said in a conversation. But if you forget, and I know this sounds dumb, but you will. If you forget that yo is me and two is you, yo, tu, su, him or her, tu, you, me, yo. Those kind of basic words will throw you off because most of the way we speak, a lot of the words in the way we speak 
in both languages are those filler words. And those are the words that are so easy to get wrong, right? El is him, ella is her. If it has an O on the end, it's usually masculine. We don't have gender in English, gender specific words, but most of the words are gender specific, even with things that don't have a gender. If it ends with an O, it's almost always a masculine word. If it ends with an A, it's almost always a feminine word, right? Masculino, masculine. Feminina, feminine. Now that word is very similar to English, right? So you'll probably understand a lot of words, right? Almost all the, the T-I-O-N words in English are just C-I-O-N in, es in Espanol. Entonces, por ejemplo, for example, education, education. Right? I'm going to teach you about a thousand words right now in Spanish. Information, information. If you, if you stop and think about how many words are actually T-I-O-N words, almost all of those cross over directly, but are pronounced a little differently with the C sound, information, information. My strong accent coming through there for you Spanish speakers. Instead of the T-I-O-N, the stronger T sound. Okay, so there's, you've just learned about a thousand words. And if you keep that in mind when you're speaking, when I'm speaking, I'll actually search. Even though those words are kind of long and complicated, I know them in English. So I can cross those over and they almost universally cross over. There's a good portion of words, even if you don't speak any Spanish, that you'll rec recognize as an English speaker. But the problem is if you don't know the yo, tu, ella, el, su, all those kind of words you're gonna get thrown off so fast in a real conversation because when you're looking at it on a screen, right? And so let's talk about that, like Andy, right? Talking about nalgas and things like that. In the real world, people are using slang. In the real world, people aren't talking formal app. If I put in, if I put in, I, I, I might get like censored on YouTube for saying these. If you put into Google anything that's slang, it, it probably will just, not translate it correctly. So there's a lot of words that even though Google Translate is pretty good, it's not gonna translate it correctly. Pedo, let's use pedo as an example. Okay, pedo, okay, pedo. All right, pedo is fart, right? So it would be like, oh, fart, right? What a fart. Here's how they actually use pedo. And this is just a few examples. Let's talk about pedo, all right? Because, yeah, pedo, okay, pedo. Hmm. What's up? What is wrong with you? What did you do? Que pedo. All right. Es tu pedo. That's your problem. Es su pedo. That's their problem. It's none of my business. Hmm? Now, as I'm live, I'm not remembering all. There's like 20 different phrases that you might hear that have the word pedo in them. I almost never hear... Mexicanos use the word pedo, that is fart, as in in its real sense. It's almost always used as street talk, a slang term, right? Que pedo, es tu pedo. Eso no es mi pedo, that's not my problem. I didn't do it, it's not my problem, all right? That's real life. But if you go to an app that's teaching you Spanish, it's not gonna teach you any of that. And that's the problem with the way Spanish is being taught and that's why bad Spanish classes from me are here. Because even though the grammar might not be right and you should still use the app and study the grammar and learn the context and things like that, because those are things. But what I'm gonna share with you is, is how people actually talk, how we're communicating on the street. Que pasa way? And you're like, what's a way? Well, way is actually guay, G-U-E-Y, guay, guay. But they often actually spell it with a W, W-E-Y, like way because it means dude, but it's actually somewhat crude. So if you say guay to your wife, your girlfriend, your mom, that's considered inappropriate. But if you say it to your friends, it's totally fine. If you say, I, I've literally had videos that I've showed you guys where I say guay to a police officer and he was insulted by that because it's me being casual and informal because the Spanish language correctly used is formal, but in real life it isn't. So if you want to insult a police officer, and in a way, without actually being vulgar, you're belittling him, you're like, what's up, dude? You're basically saying, you're just another dude. You mean nothing to me. It's not that the word is actually an insult. Everybody calls their friends way. If I listen 
to my friend Chan talk on the phone. He's like, Entonces, ¿dónde vamos, güey? Sí, güey. Pues en un hora me voy, güey, güey. Sí, güey. Güey, ya, yeah, pues como en la medianoche vamos a buscar la, busca las nombres. Sí, puedo en la antra. Ya. Yeah. Pues vamos, güey. Ok, güey, bye, güey. Ok, that's a real, that, that's, a, that's an example of a real conversation that I was just sitting next to like two days ago. And I was sitting there thinking, does he realize how many times he said way? Now this guy is a bit of a naco, as we would say. And I use that in a nice way, but a naco would be someone who's not really educated with their words, right? A naco would be, the, 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 the elites would call someone who was poor a naco. But someone who wasn't actually an elite would call someone who was just had a potty mouth naco, right? It's just like, that's trashy, all right? So way, W-E-Y, but it's actually spelled G-U-E-Y, gwey. So I see it like gwey, gwey, ¿qué pasa gwey? But it's really kind of pronounced way, and so they basically just say way, because that's what we do with words, right? Dude, dude, dude is informal. It's not really an insult, but it's like, what's up, dude? Dude, dude, dude. See what we do? We do the same in English. So imagine being a Mexican uh, Spanish speaker, and hearing the way we use words, the way if it's a common slang word, we round it off, we twist it up, we manipulate it, we play with it. It's like putty, right? So there's words that are formal and official, and those are used, but they're mixed in with words that are not formal and not official at all. Let's talk about it, though, because on each episode of Bad Spanish, I want to give you guys a little treat and show you something from the street. Yes, that was a rhyme, but if I said it in Spanish, it would sound like this. Quiero darte un Dulce con algo de la calle. So it doesn't really, rhymes, rhymes and memes, by the way, when your Mexican friends are all laughing and they show you a meme, even if you understand the words, you probably have no idea what's being laughed at. Just like when you see a meme, unless it's like been an international thing. The current Will Smith, Smith slapping meme, probably they understand because that's kind of an international thing right? But most memes are relevant to culture and, and stuff like that, and they probably won't. Hang on. No pole break. Mm. Mm. No pal crudo con sal en un plato. No polis, raw with salt on a plate. Okay, that's basic, right? So if you're in your Spanish app, it's going to give you phrases like that, guys. The problem is when you're actually with people. Güey, quiero comer no pole, güey. Con sal y un plato. Tienes un plato, güey. And, and, and now that I've just told you, you probably understand what's being said. But if you were with somebody and you would learn from the app, you would be like, what the bleep was just said? Güey. That's what learning Spanish is all about. All right, I'm kind of looking at your comments, but... Uh, Ay, que pedo, Fernando. No me molestas. Hmm? No. In serio. Está bien, güey. So, if we look at this, I'm just looking over some of your guys' thing. Basically, you're already a native Spanish speaker because you use way at the end of every sentence. This, Fernando, that is actually true, but in a certain class, a more formal, like my parents' age, they wouldn't use that. That would be considered crass to them. Now, I'm sure their generation has many other slangs, and so they look down on the people using güey because that's crass and naco, right? But obviously their generation has their own slang words and way. Now, I'm not saying you should talk that way. But if I'm with somebody, I do want to fit in with the culture, but I also don't want to just be a, a poser, right? So if I'm with somebody and I'm like, and he calls everybody Gwei, he's like, Gwei, ¿qué pasa, Gwei? Fist bump, right? I'm going to call him Gwei. I'm like, bueno, Gwei, because I don't need, I don't want to be formal because it would seem weird. But at the same time, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be aware of my language. I'm not going to go start talking to everybody and talking like, uh, uh, like I'm, I've been, I've been doing some weed, right? I'm not going to, dude, because that's, if you say, güey, que pasa? It's, it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, that kind of equivalent in English. So I'm not going to walk around doing my business and working with people and talking to, to people on an everyday basis and be like, güey, que pasa? Because it will be unprofessional. It will be naco. It will be too informal. So it is very important. And, and understand, Mexicanos are very aware of that. If this same guy was talking to his grandma, he would not be speaking like that. Because how you treat 
uh, different ages and how you respect your parents versus speaking to your grandma versus speaking to your friend, your girlfriend, your wife. These are very different things. Whereas in English, people kind of have their manner and they're that way and crass with everybody. That's really not how it is. That's considered very badly educated if you're with that way. So really, yes, uh, Caleb, it does come down to social skills. And this is what I tell everybody, including Spanish speakers trying to learn English. You just need to get out and talk to people. You need to hear native speakers. You will not learn a language from an app. You'll pick up new words. You'll kick off understanding the him and her and the, the boring words that you need. You can use the exercise in an app to absolutely help drill it in. But what you really want to do is spend an hour in your app and then go out and spend, go, go down to the district where they're selling the tacos and try to talk to people. And you're going to suck, way. You suck. Que feo eres con español, güey, pero bueno, que chido que te hablas. Right? Your Spanish sucks, but it's good you're trying. Throw it out there. Throw it down and go for it. All right? Y no tengo salsa en mi nopale porque me gusta natural, güey. Es bueno. I'll go, see me cocinar. I cook it sometimes. A veces me cocinar. Pero si, y es bueno por mi pancita. Hmm? All right? Now... Pancita, right? These are a lot of things you'll see. They put ita on the little things, right? So if you look at stomach, right? If you go to the Spanish dict, which is a good app, by the way, for individual words, and search stomach, it says estomico or bar, or bar, bar, <laughs> the, the rolled R's, the double, if there's two R's, it's rolled, like perro is dog, right? It's also like bitch. It is un perro, right? So it's also the same as we use it in English. But perro is dog. And that rolled R, I've had a really difficult time. Okay. Perro. Borrega. I tend to roll it too little or too much, and it's hard. Borrega. But the, here's the thing. Borrega is not a word I actually hear used. A stomacho, a stomacho is stomach, right? His stomach is aching. He feels sick. You can look at it here. You can get Spanish dict. It's a pretty good app. It's, you don't use Spanish dict to translate. You use Spanish dict for individual words, like a dictionary. And it can be very fast for just checking a word. Whereas you use something like Google Translate to translate phrases and conversations, okay? But in the real world, when they're actually talking on the street, at least in Central Mexico, this could be different in Colombia, different in Southern Mexico, different in Northern Mexico. But what you actually hear them say is panza, which translates belly. So that's a more informal word. And the problem is this isn't how you're taught in a school, in a Spanish class. So in real life, you could say mi estomago. But that will be a word more that a doctor might say to you. Duele en tu estomago. Okay, you notice I don't use, you can tell I don't use the word very much because I'm not pronouncing it right. Panza, my belly. Pancita. Pancita is a type of food. It's basically like cow stomach and it's gross and it smells super intense and I never, ugh. Whoo, no manches, güey. Um, but, but panza and pancita, pancita is also like, oh, it's giving me pancita, duele mi pancita. It's a little bit childish and even more informal than panza. But you'll hear that. So if you say, oh, I know what stomach means, it's, it's a stomach hole. And then you hear somebody say, wait, ¿qué pasa con tu panza? ¿Eres gordo o qué? Right? And, you, and you're like, what's panza? Because that's the word they actually use on the street. So my bad Spanish isn't trying to be bad. I'm not trying to snub using good grammar. I'm trying to help us learn to remember that we have to talk. <laughs> and learn to speak where we're at. When I visited Colombia, I could, I could, this was early on when I was down here, like 2018, I think. So my Spanish was still bad anyways. And I went to Colombia and it was even worse because they have a different accent. So now I'm starting to understand. I can barely, you know how in English we understand a Southerner versus a Texan versus a Northerner versus a British guy, right? They have distinct accents versus an Australian guy. Well, they're the same way with Guatemalans, with Colombians, with people from different regions of Mexico, right? But to me, it's all Spanish. It's just, it's just harder to understand sometimes. I'm finally to the point now, like a Colombian accent might be like, vamos a la cafe, güey. Vamos a la cafe, güey. It's kind of like rolls differently. Whereas in Spanish accent, I might say, 
Vamos a la café. Vamos a la café, güey. Vamos a la café. Um, so I get teased sometimes because if I watch a show, like a show that's from Colombia, I'll accidentally start speaking with a Colombian accent. Vamos a la café. And then I'll get teased because they're like, why are you talking with a Colombian accent? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm just speaking Spanish. Wait. These are all things that you have to learn. ¿Dónde está la baño? So if you say, amigo, ¿dónde está la baño? ¿Dónde está la baño? Both of those work. If you're in an app, it's probably going to say, ¿dónde está la baño? But you're actually adding all the words. Like real people don't add every formal filler word to every sentence. Okay. So, baño. Baño is bathroom. Donde es la baño? Where is the bathroom? These are basics. And if you start, these are the kind of things you will get benefit from an app because you'll start studying these and, realize, and you'll start getting these basic fundamental words to start building sentences. Just go out and use them with real people, okay? And practice through usage, yes. My Spanish gets better with the amount of beer I had. I, maybe my Spanish gets worse, but I'm sure your Spanish gets more relaxed, Daniels. And, and yes, easy. Eso, no, eso es un exe ciento V. Y me gusta. Es por fotos de la calle, güey. Así es, así es. Es muy bien. So, a lot of no people. Everybody, everybody wants to hear groseros. And if you say... If you enter, let's say this, and I'm saying this purely for educational purposes, right? If I enter into Google, ¿Qué? ¿Qué puto eres pendejo? Okay, if I say, ¿Qué puto eres pendejo? Google's going to translate that. What an effing idiot you are, which really is kind of correct, but not. But oftentimes, Google will actually simply ignore the groseros or the slang. They'll, it'll just drop them out, which while I understand that the goal when you're teaching Spanish is not to teach people to be vulgar, in real life, everyone wants to know the vulgarities. 12-year-olds, girls will run around with a t-shirt that says F-U on it. Because to them, that word is just, ah, ha, ha, ha. It's, a, it's an English vulgarity. They don't understand that that's one of our more aggressive vulgarities. You would never, well, almost never sell your daughter to school with a shirt that says F you. That would just be kind of trashy, right? But here they don't understand. Just like, just like when they say, no mames way, right? And... I guess no mames would more or less be like, what the F? But like pedo, it has a huge range of uses. And like the F word, I, I've never really used that. My mother wouldn't, it was like, no way, you're not talking that way, right? So I learned to kind of not behave that way. But it's more difficult in Spanish for me not to use what they consider groseros because oftentimes, here's the thing in Mexico. In English, we have how many swear words? I mean swear words, right? You can insult people lots of different ways, but you really can count on your hands the amount of primary vulgarities we have in English. It's so much more complicated, right? So you can say, eres un chingón. And that's like, oh, you're a badass, right? Eres un chingón. But chingón is not actually a good word. So if you said like, chinga tu madre, you might get punched in the nose because you're basically saying like, F your mother, right? This is probably where I'm going to get demonetized because the way they use vulgarities in Spanish and even words that aren't necessarily vulgar use certain ways become vulgar, become badly educated. If you visit someone's house, you're supposed to be respectful to their house, right? Especially to the lady of the house. So there's certain things you would never go into if a friend invited you to his house. Said, hey, let's, vamos por chelas, I'm in casa, güey. Let's go have a beer at my house. And you went into his house and you were feeling formal and relaxed. And he's like, eso es mi esposa, this is my wife. You wouldn't say, que pasa, güey? Because that would be very disrespectful to his wife. You don't know her, she's not your friend. And, and she's the woman of the house, right? So you'd be like, hola, como estas? Buenas tardes. You would use your formal approach for that. Buenas tardes, señora. Bear in mind that 
even though technically a married woman is a senora, if they're young and pretty, they probably expect to be called a senorita. And that's more of a compliment. Um, Hola, senoritas. And I will say that to most people. For example, I know for a fact that in Liverpool, the girls that work in the clothing where the women are in their 60s, they're definitely senoras. But the, but the girls that work in Liverpool, which is an upper scale department store down here, they're required to call them all senoritas because it makes them, it's, it's like calling someone young, right? Young and fresh and like pretty. So these little things, they have dialects, they have accents, they have regional slang. And you've got to remember, there's all these Spanish-speaking countries, right? There's all these Spanish-speaking countries down here. Huge amounts of them. Every one of them have their regional cultures. Even within Mexico, there's differences. But the most important thing is, I think, to listen and to be aware of your environment. And don't just start repeating gross ideas. Mexicanos are going to laugh when you say their vulgarities because they think it's funny, just like you think it's funny when they say English vulgarities and they have no idea what they're saying. So if they're your friend, they're not going to be too offended if you say a vulgarity. They might be like, whoa, did he just say that way? Did you just say that to my woman? Right? But they're probably not going to get mad. But if you're talking to someone who doesn't know you or you're angry or they think you're angry or you're in the store, and you also have to remember that the way, I, the way we talk, right? You guys know that the way I talk and the way English speakers talk in general is kind of animated. You know how when we hear German, when, when we hear a German speak, it sounds a little bit rough and rude and angry? And I'm not a German speaker, but to me at least, it's not that I don't like the German language, but it sounds very, and, and Russian can be a little bit that way as well. Well, that's how we are to Mex Spanish speakers. Because Spanish is a very fluid, pretty, there's conjugations, there's variations of the words like panza, pancitas, like little, tum little tummy, right? Mama, mamacita. Well, es un mama, she's a mother. But if you say es un mamacita, it's like she is a hot mama. All right, so that's not necessarily a bad word, but if you, if you go to someone who's out at the mall with their girlfriend and you're like, eres un mamacita, well, the dude's gonna be pissed because you're obviously flirting with her. So little variations. So if you took English, here's the English dictionary and here's the Spanish dictionary. Spanish in its basic sense is actually more logically put together, right? The, the formation of conjugations, the way words are spelled, it's more phonetic, things like that. But in English, here's the, the vulgarities dictionary. And in Spanish, here's the vulgarities dictionary. Because there's so many endless variables of ways to mix vulgarities, insults, all this kind of stuff. That part can be so much more complicated. And that's where you got to watch yourself and where you got to learn and got to listen to how people are speaking. Not that you need to be vulgar with people. In general, I think you should avoid that. So you're seen as educated and well-mannered. But... That balance, that balance, all right? Just looking over your guys' comments and how to learn not to speak Spanish with Gavin. No, this is bad Spanish class, but this is real world Spanish that we're talking about here. So I really wanna emphasize this. Bad Spanish class is good Spanish class. Hi everybody, I'm Gavin Syme. Welcome to bad Spanish class because bad Spanish class is real Spanish class. Should I put that at the front of the videos? All right, so you get the idea. I've been going for a while. I don't want to overwhelm you guys. If you want to start learning your Spanish, use the app and start going through words. Pay attention to the boring stuff that you don't want to learn, like him and her, right? A L. Pay attention to the A's and the O's. The O's are going to be masculine. The A's are feminine. And even though objects, foods, things like that, they'll have masculine and feminine as well. It doesn't mean that a gender is being applied specifically because, you know, a wrench doesn't actually have a gender. But they're still going to use words that way. But when you're talking about referencing people, a stoy, I am, eres, you are, these can sound really, really similar to a non-speaker. To them, there's night and day, right? Tengo miedo. Tengo miedo. I'm afraid. Tengo mierda. I have shit. Now, to me, it took me so long. You know how many times I screwed that up? Miedo and mierda? It sounds so close, right? And I'm pro my pronunciation, still I struggle with the pronunciation of that, right? And so, yeah, it's kind of cool that 
that words have gender because that's real world. It's like, oh, how are you gonna how are you gonna politically correct that one because the entire language is built around it, right? But that's a hugely distinct difference. The the non-gender neutralness of Spanish and the conjugations. And we'll come into conjugations in a different chapter, but you can look it up, you can search it. Conjugations can be very confusing and take a long time to get your head around. But if you kind of get the basics, it'll, it'll come along, all right? And conjugations are how basically words are combined. So Spanish is a pronoun drop language. And a lot of times a word that's the base word, right? The base word is then going to be combined with a variation, and that's going to be your conjugation, right? So let's say, oh, what's an example? You know what? I'm going to do. An, I'm going to do an example of this another time because conjugations are still even a little tricky for me, even though I know what they're doing and they're they should be simple. In real life, they're not very simple. So before I do a video on conjugations in the real world, I will try to mix it up a little bit. But before we close out, let me show you, you know, how, how people talk, right? So we come in here, let's take a video. Here I'm driving, come across a DUI checkpoint. Let's listen. Everybody act normal. They're just, they're just harassing people. All right, we're not doing anything. So hear the accent, hear the rolling of words and the fact that it's, this is normal talk, the way they're talking. Even though there's a video you're kind of hearing in the background, you're not going to learn that from an app. What's up? Now you notice with cops, I do this a lot. I don't, I don't try to do a legal matter where they're harassing me in English. I've told you this a lot. I get harassed for it by, by the, uh, by the, the posers. But if you don't know Spanish code, don't try and talk to someone who's trying to take advantage of you because they actually are legal required to provide you a translator. But in this case, dealing with a DUI checkpoint, let's see what they say. I pull up and I say, what's up? Que pasa? What's up? And I'm trying to be calm, but also very informal. Like, I don't even care what's going on here. What, whatever, dudes, what's going on, right? So I'm actually making a concerted effort to not be confrontational because I'm not really in activist mode. I'm just trying to drive and not be annoyed. How you doing? Good morning. How you doing? This is a this is an alcohol checkpoint. They want to check and see if you've been drinking. Blow here, please. And I'm like, what the bleep? No, you have a warrant because here we actually also have a constitution. We have Article One, Article Eleven, and Article Sixteen of the Constitution Republic of Mexico, and they have actually no right to be stopping me on the road, which is why I approach it, not that I'm trying to fight, but I approach it like I have no need to be here, okay? okay let's Suck it, blow on it. Gracias. Thank you, no. Immediately start driving. I don't wait, I don't ask, I didn't argue. I wasn't here to argue, I didn't want to do activist mode, right? But I wasn't blowing on a DUI. I wasn't drunk, obviously, but I wasn't blowing on this because this is a dangerous area we were passing through. It's one of the rougher areas in Mexico right now. It was night, it was late. We've been out doing some photos and stuff. I'm coming back through. I don't even know, like, I don't want to be stopping at all on this road. This is a very, this is down by, um, down by, why am I forgetting words? Why is it that when I go live, I just forget everything? That's what annoys me the most. You know that, you know that right now? This, this was, uh, oh my goodness. What is wrong with me today? Hang on, bear with me. So you, just so you have a reference point of what I'm talking about, this was Salaya. Salaya is super violent right now. So like you do not go on the back roads at night kind of violent, which most of Mexico is not. Despite the rumors, most areas are, are it's just rumors. But things do move around. The violence, things, corruption, things move around. And that area is bad. So I didn't, there's no way I was getting out of the car here. This, for, all I, for all we know, this wasn't even real police, right? This is a road where people, there's reports recently of people trying to hijack vehicles and they get on overpasses, throw large rocks from the overpass to penetrate the windshield of cars. And then when people stop, they take their vehicle at gunpoint, right? And I don't mean this to scare you about Mexico, only that this particular city right now is not good. 
and it's not an area that I hang out in. So it's about being informed. You go 20 miles away and it's very calm. But this city has a lot of problems right now. And Guanajuato State in general, but Celaya is probably the worst. Let's switch back here and listen. And this and my friends back there are like, you're you're supposed to blow it. Because these are not activists, right? Oh what are you doing? No me vas a estar por ellos. I'm not going to be tested. Too many idiots on the road. They're going to chase you down. But of course they're not because I have a right to pass. And let me just show you this video all together now as I come up to this checkpoint because I kind of broke it up. I want to show it to you again. I'm coming up to a checkpoint. What's up? Buen día. How you doing? Eh, dispositivo de alcoholimetría. Ah, que te van a ver si te has tomado. Sople aquí, por favor. Que le sople. Que le sople. Gracias. Que le sople. Wait, wait. Now, this is something I do a lot in Mexico. If I don't want to fight, if I don't want to be an activist, and usually I don't because I'm the outsider and it, 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 people don't respond to it as well as they would. Well, they didn't respond to me very well standing up for myself in the States either. Look what happened, right? But here's the thing. Here, if I drive away from a DUI checkpoint, there's almost zero chance they're going to come after me. And even if they do, they're just going to harass me. It's not like I'm going to get, I'm, I'm going to get nailed for eluding. Running from the cops, as I've shown you guys before and I've done, is a normal thing down here. I usually try and avoid it because it tends to escalate the situation. But actually, there was a very famous video in Mexico here just recently where some guys uploaded a video and they were running from the police. And the police finally stopped them. They were being chased by all these police cars. And they said, you don't have jurisdiction on this road. You got to call the federal police. The federal police were called because they refused to get out of the car, let their vehicle be searched. And they actually stood up for themselves and their rights in the Constitution, which, yes, down here as well, most people are ignorant of. But if you know it and you stand up for it, the key here is, is that... Us gringo activists are excited, we get angry, we get agitated like me, even more guys like James Freeman and stuff. But down here, you're going to lose the narrative immediately if you're the one being vulgar, if you're the one being aggressive. So actually the way, and this is why I struggle a little bit with activism, because as an activist in the States, using some aggression is actually how you protect yourself, right? If I go up to a cop, I'm like, what are you doing here? What are you guys harassing him for? that level of confidence and combativeness and aggressiveness actually shows the cop in the States that I might know what I'm doing a little bit, that I'm not just gonna lie down. Down here, if you approach it that way, you're gonna shock them for sure, but you're kinda gonna lose your narrative. The way activists actually talk down here is so absurdly formal and polite, they'll be like, let's say a cop is abusing someone. Ah, señor, ¿qué pasa? Estoy grabando, estoy grabando. Estoy grabando, no puedes hacer eso, amigo. Pues buenas tardes, buenas tardes, pero no es que tengo una ley de los derechos humanos, artículo 16, 16, 11 de la Constitución de México, y estoy grabando. No puedes grabar, no puedes grabar. Ah, sí, sí puedo, estoy grabando, buenas tardes. And, and I, I swear that's actually how the activists talk down here. And it's very difficult for me because that's not how gringos communicate when they get agitated. In the US, I was one of the calmer activists. I didn't use vulgarities. I tried to always try to keep it in control, right? But, but yeah, so I've never let the police search my vehicle. If they say they're searching my vehicle, no, because under the constitution, they have to have a warrant. So knowing you're having a basic translation of the constitution in your vehicle if you're traveling in Mexico, and just knowing a few of the fundamentals, the human rights articles, and just knowing those, if you just start talking about those, the police are kind of being like, whoa, this guy actually knows his rights. What's going on here, right? But actually communicating, nothing is a direct translation in real life. Sometimes the words are, but your context, your demeanor. If you come down here, I hear, I'll be talking to my mother and one of my Mexican people is here. And I'll be like, yeah, mom, did you see what's going on? Like, it's crazy. Like what they did over there in St. Louis. And I'll be talking, just like we would normally talk. I'm talking to my mom and I'll, I'll come back and they'll say to me, why are you fighting with your mom, man? You, are you guys angry? And I'm like, no, we're just talking. So you have to understand that if you translate exactly the way you talk, the tone that you talk, the energy that you speak with into Spanish, even if the words are right, you're going to come off as very aggressive and they're going to be scared of you. And this is, this, 
this, it could be good to know this, right? There's a time when you want your hackles up and you want to show that you're in charge. But when you're in a foreign culture, generally you want to adapt more to their culture, right? And yeah, normally if you just say no to the police on something, they really know that they're violating the law. Most people just don't care. So they'll stop people, they'll search in their cars. And yeah, the police are thugs down here. They want bribes, they'll plant drugs on people, stuff like that. Normally it's for a $500, a $20 bribe, not to put someone away in prison for 10 years so they can have a feather in their cap. These guys just want a bribe. So most situations like that, even if you did fall for it, you could probably just give a few a few bucks, right? But if you're a gringo and you come down here and a cop's pulling you over for speeding and he's like, oh, it's a big deal. Just tell him, no, I want a ticket. Take me to the station. I want a written ticket. Right? If he's like, no, it'll be like 10,000 pesos. No, it won't. That's BS. Don't, they'll, they'll try to scam you. And so it is important when they're stopping me, that's why I put my hackles up a little. I try to hold my ground a little bit because I want them to not be excited about messing with me. I don't want to be the easy target. No, they're not searching my vehicle. Puedes buscar atrás en tu, en tu carro. No, no, está bien, amigo. I could say, no, you're not searching nothing in my car. And that's my default reaction. But in reality, the better way to say that is, ah, no, está bien, amigo. Pues si tienes un orden judicial, a warrant, está bien, pero no me gusta mi derecho, y gracias. It's, you see how it's kind of lighthearted and formal and respectful, even though they don't deserve it, I know. But, but languages have huge differences. This is, this is real Spanish, guys. It may be bad Spanish, but it's not really. Because while you should learn the grammar and the details and the subtleties, it's the Spanish on the streets and the context and knowing, knowing how to do it that actually is gonna, gonna make you a Spanish speaker. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up today. This was Bad Spanish Level 1, all right? Episode 1. If you guys want more Bad Spanish, drop a link in the comments. Hit that like, hit that sub. Drop some support of the channel if, if you're feeling it. Uh, and... Thanks to our, our Patreons, our channel backers, and those who drop super chats and things like that. I really appreciate you guys helping with the tacos because times are a little tough these days still. And we're plugging along, but I do appreciate it. And do you recommend a single man moving there? I mean, yeah, it's, it's great. There's so many great places to live here. And there's so many, depends on whether you want beach or highlands or what, but there's so many cool places to be especially as a single guy, especially if you've got a job, if you work online or something like that, it's just a great place. Cost of living's a lot lower. That's kind of another video and I have a whole Spanish category on this channel. We can do more videos on Mexico if you want. If you guys want more bad Spanish, let me know if you'll, if you'll be in here. I don't know how many people we had live, but I thought this was a pretty good bad Spanish class, honestly. So it's, it's cool and it's, I know people want to see me getting beat up by cops, but I can't do that every day. But I can show you some of my adventures here on the streets, like I did with the DUI checkpoint, explain what's happening, and we can use those not only to talk about how to defend your rights, but how to communicate in Spanish. With that, I'm going to call it good. Let me guys know, let me know you guys if you want to see more, and we will see you next time. Peace.